Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the video. This is going to be part four of the front suspension build. And in this video, we're gonna be making the lower control arm. So if you remember in part three, we had remade these steering arms and we had made some changes to the steering rack so that we could get no bump steer during our travel and as, as good Ackerman as I thought I could possibly get. Now the next thing that I want to do is design my lower control arm. So what I've done so far is I have a lower control arm set in here that I already made. Um, I've actually made three different lower control arms for this setup so far. This is the first one that I made. It's, it's flat. I originally thought the flat one was not going to allow enough articulation through here for the spindle. So when I thought that was the case, then I made this one which has a kick in it and the reason that I did that was so that it would alleviate the like the angle down at the bottom of the spindle there and the problem with this one is I didn't feel like I could get a strong enough build here where it connects to the uh, the spindle so then I made this one now these all have the same offset and the same length and all that they're just uh, slightly different design types. I made this one which was boxed and it also had a kick like the tubular one up there. However this one after I made this kinda temporary one had the same kinda limitations up front here for my connection point that that one did. So at that point I was kind of in between designs. I wasn't completely sure what I was gonna do yet but because these all had the same uh, dimensions, I could still move forward with uh, with the design. So once I worked on the spindle and found the limitations of my steering, because that's typically what limits my travel, with, with all that kind of set up, then I knew what my full droop and my full compression was going to be. And once I had that, I was able to actually cycle this and found out that I can actually get enough articulation through here for the spindle so that brought me back to being able to have at least a straight lower control arm which is good because that's a lot easier to make and it will give me a little bit more ground clearance underneath the chassis. So with that I moved back to, I threw in this, uh, this kind of temporary lower control arm and I bolted the shock absorber in place and I clamped in these angle irons just so that I could move this mounting position back and forth and then I basically at the top also made some temporary mounting points that I could move things around. I could unclamp this and move it back to change the elevation or I could move it this way or that way to just adjust the pivot point of the upper shock absorber there. So at that point, knowing what my full compression was going to be, I could figure out at least a good starting point for my uh, Hey bud, that's my block. That's my block for my ride height. You can't have that one. I mean you can, but I'm gonna take that back. So don't get carried away with that. So once I, I knew my full compression, I could then figure out my upper shock absorber mounting point roughly. This this isn't a hundred percent where it's gonna be, but I could use this to figure out where that was going to be because if you remember in another video I said that at full compression I want to be as close to 90 degrees as possible. Keeping in mind that I'm going to have 20 to 22 inches of travel here and it's only a 12 inch stroke shock absorber so I need to figure out you know how far inboard I need to be in order for that to work. So I came up with this which is about 15, 14, 15 inches in from the spindle pivot point. And that gets me so that at full droop then, the shock absorber is still allowing the, uh, the suspension to have all of its travel. It's actually right now about an inch short, but this at least you know tells me that I need to make a lower control arm that has enough structure right here to uh, be able to support a mounting location right around here. 
hey bud i know that it's fun chewing on stuff that i need but really this is i need this for that so if you can just let go let go let go nope nope you can't have that sorry so that led me to this design now this is pretty pretty similar to the control arm that's down there the only difference is it's the same length and this portion here is the same width however after looking at the control arm that's on there and measuring the tire I decided that I wanted a little bit longer wheelbase so I actually pushed this mounting location forward about an inch and a half, inch and five eighths maybe and I actually realized that in doing that I could also make it symmetrical so I actually made the mounting point completely down the middle uh, which is kind of nice because it gives you a little bit of you know making it a little bit universal for if this is on the driver side or the passenger side and you can flip it one way or the other at least on this template so that helps a little bit so I laid out everything that I need and what's different on this control arm is this has the mounting points here for the spindle and these are made out of quarter inch and before these were just tabs welded on right here this spine now runs all the way through to where the shock absorber connection point is going to be which is right here so this should give me a lot of strength through here and then another thing that I changed is on the other control arms the control arm kind of stopped right here and these tabs just kind of dangled out here in the middle of nowhere well this control arm I have to keep it coped out in here so that I've got clearance for the spindle to move through there but I don't have to keep it clear out here so this one's gonna have the top and bottom plates which are gonna be eighth inch they're gonna come all the way out here basically just give me enough room here for the washers and the bolts of the spindle and then another thing I did just to make this one a little bit more precise I machined these caps which fit inside these bushings these are the bushings collars bushing collars these are inch and three quarters outside diameter I machined this piece to go in here and then I cut this piece of one and three quarter inch tube the exact length that I need so I put that piece in there I put this collar on here kind of draw the whole thing in tight and then that should keep these uh, bushings really straight while I'm doing all this welding I had something kind of similar I was doing it with angle iron for this lower control arm and that works you can definitely do that I just had angle iron clamped on these bushings real tight as I welded them but they still have a tendency to kind of move and warp a little bit when you weld them and I'm hoping that this one being a little bit stronger will hold them a little bit straighter so since I'm pretty confident with this setup and I've already bent the pieces for this one and cut everything and tacked it in place so this one is ready to go with the top plates I still need to make a template for the top plates and then plasma cut out the the pieces for the top plates and like I said the top and bottom pieces are going to be eighth inch and this piece is all made out of quarter inch going down the middle these pieces coming through here are quarter inch and everything else is eighth inch but because I'm pretty confident with the design of this one I'm gonna do a little uh, fast motion of me making the pieces for the next one and then when I have that all tacked together then we'll uh, weld on the top and bottom plates to this piece
Okay, so you guys just watched me make the parts for the lower control arm, do some plasma cutting, and then I've got this all tacked together. I'm not going to solid weld it yet because solid welding this will be a big project. Before I spend all that time to solid weld this, because I'll probably TIG weld it, I want to make sure that everything on it is correct, and I want to have my shock absorber mounting points made, because I'll, I'll weld that all at the same time. It seems pretty strong. It's uh, it's an inch and three quarters thick. Like I said before, this the side plates are inch and a half, and then the top and the bottom plates are eighth inch thick. So overall, it comes out to inch and three quarters, which is kind of nice because the bushings themselves are inch and three quarters outside diameter. So it kind of works well with that. I'm a little bit concerned that the shock absorber is so far inboard because when this is you know hitting bumps really hard it's going to be an incredible amount of stress right in the middle of this control arm but it is pretty strong i mean it's it's pretty heavy it's a really very stout control arm and when i do make these shock absorber mounting points they're going to come from down here they're going to come wrap up and they're going to extend here and probably kick out over here to miss this opening and probably come you know, all the way to here to try and spread some of the load on the control arm. So I would never do this on the rear control arms because they're going to be carrying the engine so they're going to be subject to a lot more stress than these. These really, in all honesty, are not carrying that much weight so I don't think it'll be a problem. I won't really know until I actually get it out on the trail and put it through some abuse but honestly I think those will be probably stronger than I think they're gonna be. So if you look over here, I've got this one carrying some of the material out as, as close to the tab as possible. The other ones, this is one of the earlier prototypes I made. I had kind of stopped the control arm here and then these were really just welded on here and although I was gonna put pieces going from here to here and I would have made it pretty pretty strong I don't know. I like I think this one will be stronger and lighter just because this tab up here is kind of integrated into the design. So there's more support all the way to the end here and then these pieces are solid. They run all the way through back to where the shock absorber mounting point is going to be. So I think that's going to work pretty well for some strength. And then I did still leave this all coped out so it allows the spindle plenty of travel. As a matter of fact, if I let it go to full droop, you can't really tell with the camera, but it's uh, like this is a, gonna be about where the, the spindle ends up and it's not hitting the control arm yet and it can still do its full steering rotation without interfering with the lower control arm at all. So. It's, uh, it's kind of close, but it, it clears. It fully clears everywhere. I only allowed myself enough space in here for clearance because the more space I leave, the weaker it gets. But um, I'm real happy with this. The gap that I left in there, I think is gonna be really good. So guys, that's it for this video. I really just wanted to show you that I had what I think is gonna be the final design for the lower control arm. Uh, I think this is gonna work with everything mechanically. I also think just aesthetically it looks good, which believe it or not on a project like this, that does have a lot to do with it. But I think this is going to give me what I need. I have made the parts for two of them. So I'm going to tack together the other one. I'm gonna tack on the tabs and get that all going because I've almost, I can still do the shock absorber mounts on this side, but because I'm going to have the steering shaft going from the other side up to the steering rack, that's going to interfere with some things on the suspension, and I can't design that on this side. So what I'm going to do is get that other control arm tacked up so that I can assemble the other side. I already have the spindle all welded up, so that's ready to go. So in the next video, I should have a lot of that all tacked up, welded up, and then I'll have a, a steering shaft mocked in place so that we can make sure from this point on that none of these components are getting in the way of the steering shaft 
and you'll see that the steering shaft most likely is going to play a big part in the design of the upper control arm because on the other Baja I had to specially design the upper control arm to miss the steering shaft. I also think I'm going to have an issue with this bar right here running interference for the upper control arm also. So thanks for watching the videos guys. I hope they're helping you out with your projects or whatever you're working on and I hope to see you on the next video. Take care.